Uh, let's talk about moths now. We're in the midst of a moth invasion, apparently. At least one listener has agreed with that. Stella in Brighton. Experts say the cold weather is partly to blame for the epidemic, which is hitting the Guildford and Godalming areas particularly bad. How do they know this? Because computer experts have developed a high-tech map showing the location and frequency of attacks within our area. Graham Warren's a moth expert and joins me on the line now to talk a little bit more about it. Hello, Graham. Joe, good morning. How are you? Yes, I'm all right, thank you. I'm all right. Yeah. Now, I did hear, I mean, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the technology in a moment. I did hear that bunging a woolly jumper that maybe you've been given or bought in a second-hand shop into the uh, freezer um, and leaving it in the drawer there is quite a good way of making sure that you don't infest the rest of your wardrobe. Have you ever come across that before? Yes, that's a commonly held theory. It's one way of doing it. It's not the easiest thing to do when you've got a whole lot of garments that are obviously infected. No, um, and there's nowhere to put your fish fingers as well. well. <laughs> There's, there's always a downside to life, and that's, that's one of them. Yes, absolutely. So what's caused, let's talk a little bit more about what's caused such a surge in moths. So we had a, a text, in fact, from uh, Stella in Brighton. I, I mentioned, let me read it to you again. It says, um, I've got them in my carpet. They're eating the edges of, under the furniture. I've hoovered the affected areas and sprayed everything, including the vac dust holder, after emptying every day. But I can't keep on doing this. Stella says she has a disability as well. Just can't get, she just can't shake them off. So quite, quite a bad problem for her, and um, she's not alone. She is definitely not alone. For the last two years now, uh, we've had what is considered to be a pandemic of moths. We've got three types of moth, clothes moth, carpet moth, and food moth, and clothes moth is the most prevalent. Mm -hmm. There's something like 26 different moths in the UK, but two do all the damage. And it's not, as people have to understand, it, it's not the fully grown moth that does the damage, it's the larvae. As the larvae hatch, and those little creatures want to grow to fully grown moth, it's them that eat the garments. Right. Hence you get very small holes in your garments, because they themselves are small. Yes. And they thrive, they very much thrive on dark and undisturbed places which the clothes moth gets when you close the doors of the wardrobe, and the carpet moth gets, because if you have carpeted floors, and most people do, you've got another dark and undisturbed place under the sofa and the chairs, because you don't move them very often when you hoover. Mm. And the last year or so, 18 months, we've seen a big increase in the amount of business we're doing on carpet moths, so obviously that's becoming more of a problem, but it's the clothes moth that's the main one. And, it's, and it is very irritating, isn't it, to get something out and find that it's been munched? Well, their favourite fodder are generally our favourite garments, uh, i.e. anything that is made of natural fibres, particularly cottons and wool and cashmere. Yeah. They don't eat man-made fibres, and most, not all, but most garments these days are made primarily using natural fibres. So anything... Uh, is on the menu, basically. Interesting. I thought you were going to say they keep up to tabs with what colours are in and then well, target those. But, uh, I don't know whether we can credit them with that intelligence. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us a bit more about the technology. I mentioned there this, this map showing the location and frequency of attacks in your area. Well, we, we, we have a website called carouseldirect.com and we're in our 30th year and we're clothes care experts. And last year, uh, October 2011, we won an award at the British Invention Show for our moth map. And we've created some software. You can put your postcode into our database and it will show you, just takes a few seconds for all the information to download, whether you are in an area of high infestation. And it grades uh, the levels of infestation. And then we suggest which moth repellent products that we stock are suitable to deal with that situation. Okay. And, and anything um, before we get to the epidemic or pandemic stage we can do to deter moths other than putting your, your woolies in the freezer? I mean, sometimes, I mean, lavender was, was something that was, I don't know, it's an old wives' tale that they're not particularly meant to like. So maybe the lavender bag in your wardrobe, something like that? Well, wives' tales actually, I think, have generally been based on fact and truth, and the old pongy, smelly mothballs, which we may remember from grandma's days, they are long gone. They yeah. contain something called naphthalene. Technology has moved on. But basically, a lot of the moth repellents are either cedarwood-based from North America, mm. or they are lavender-based. And the advice is continue looking, but know what you're looking for. And what you're looking for are the larvae. Very simple to spot. The problem is they can stay in larvae stage for up to two years, so you may have the problem and you don't know it. Uh -huh. So the larvae look like, in terms of size and color and shape, a small grain of white rice. If you find those, 
take everything out of the wardrobe, thoroughly hoover it, and then use moth repellents, and we as a business can help advise on all of that. Store hanging garments in man-made suit and dress covers. It's a further barrier against the moth. And store knitwear in sweater bags, and we make all of those, and it's another barrier against the creatures. All right, okay. And more information online? Most definitely. Um, two websites, carouseldirect.com and sosmoth.com, plus a very helpful, friendly crew on the phone that will talk to anybody and help everybody. All right, Graham. Lovely to have you on our show. Pleasure thank you so much. You. No, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's Graham Warren there. So, uh, Stella, I hope that's given you some ideas as how to rid yourself of the beasties. London.